Mike from Toyota here with another Toyota tutorial. This time we're going to dive into Service Connect. As a refresher, starting with the 2018 Camry, Service Connect helps keep the lines of communication open between our customers, their Toyotas, and their dealer. If the malfunction indicator lamp, the MIL light, or maintenance required light turns on, customers can easily contact their dealer via the multimedia display through a paired Bluetooth phone. The vehicle alert data is also sent directly to the preferred servicing dealer. For this tutorial, we have to make one assumption before we get started. We assume that you've been granted access to the service lane portal in TIS by your dealer daily administrator. Okay, let's get started. Once we've logged into TIS, we click on service lane at the top, then the service connect tab there within the service lane portal. By default, we are taken to the alert tracker in Service Connect. Here we'll see a list of all the current alerts at the dealership. There's a whole lot of information on each alert displayed, including the alert date, the type of alert, be it a warning or a maintenance reminder, the VIN, including model and year, the vehicle's mileage when the alert was triggered, more specifics of the warning like SRS airbag system, FSRS, owner maintenance Reminder warning, OMRW, the tire pressure warning system, TIRW, or pre collision system warning, PCSW. Also, who the alert's been assigned to and the current status. Across the top, there are also a number of filters that we can use as well to refine the date range, limit the status of the alert, or show the alerts by type. Looks like we just got an alert on this 2020 Camry and the details tell me it's airbag related. I think I should have my BDC reach out to this customer to see if we can help them. To do so, I need to assign the alert to someone. To do that, I place a check mark in the box before the alert or alerts I want to assign and then press the person icon in the very top left. As you can see, just by hovering over the icon, I can get some details on the purpose of the icon. In this case, the person icon is used to assign multiple alerts to an associate in one single step. I clicked on the icon and brought up the list of who I can assign the alerts to. In this case, I'm going to assign this alert to John L. You'll see that the assigned to column is now updated from blank to John L. I could have also double clicked on the row, which will turn it blue, and I can scroll down lower on the screen and assign the alert from there. From here, the assigned person can document their action and save the alert. This lower area provides more specific details on the vehicle and the alert, along with providing a link to the TIS Vehicle One View tab so I can research more about the vehicle like service history. There may also be a stop sign icon if the vehicle has an open recall. If I want to find out more about the vehicle, I can follow the blue link to the Vehicle One View. Vehicle One View is also helpful to us as it shows if the vehicle has an open Service Connect alert. And hovering over the icon will show what warnings created the alert. Bottom line, our goal is to close all of these Service Connect alerts. Hopefully after we've reached out to the customer and secured an appointment to complete their maintenance or to help investigate the cause of the warning. Moving across the screen, now let's talk about what we can find on the Reports tab. The Reports tab allows us to pull a report that contains ASM activity, including alert totals, the number of open alerts, how many alerts have been assigned, the number of cases in which a guest has been notified, the number of appointments scheduled, and the number of alerts closed. Here's a quick sample of what we can see. Next up is the Do Not Call tab. The Do Not Call tab displays the guests who have requested not to be contacted by the dealership when an alert is received. This can be done in a few ways and can be noted by looking in the subscriber box on the alert. If the customer requests it to not be called during the initial enrollment process, the field will say, phone by dealer, no. Customers can still be emailed, but obviously do not call them. If you reach out to your customer and they ask to be on the Do Not Call list after the contact, simply click the Add to Do Not Call list button. Once the customer has been added to the dealer's Do Not Call list, they are not supposed to be called or emailed. 
One final note about the Do Not Call list. Customers can be removed from the list by any Service Connect admin or Service Connect and delegated admin. Next up is the Settings tab. Here you can assign permissions to employees based on their responsibilities for handling alerts. You can see it's split into three different roles, Administrator, Delegated Administrator, and Associates Enabled to Receive Alerts. By default, the dealer's General Manager, Service Director, and Service Managers will be Administrators for Service Connect and have all permissions granted to them. And the administrators can do things like changing the duration that the alerts stay in the tracker and run Service Connect reports. A key permission that they have is being able to assign delegated administrators. Delegated administrators are able to view the entire alert tracker and assign specific alerts to associates and able to receive alerts, which is the last role. Delegated administrators are usually veteran ASMs or BDC managers. The final category are associates who are unable to receive alerts but can only view the alerts that have been assigned to them. They cannot view all the alerts that come on the alert tracker. Again, alert assignments can only be done by an administrator or delegated administrator. Every role has the ability to change the status of an alert from open to closed which helps to make sure that we don't reach out to the same customer several times. If you have several people in the dealership communicating with Service Connect, it is extremely important to communicate to each other which customers have been contacted and which have not. That brings us to the final tab, Notification. This tab is where we can set up email notifications for alerts that come in. The list of associates and emails comes straight from Dealer Daily, so if there's any information that's incorrect, we'll have to go there to resolve it. There are three different types of alert notification emails. Maintenance alerts, warning notifications, and cleared alerts. Maintenance and warning alerts are separated because you may want different team members reaching out to maintenance customers versus repair customers. The BDC may be readily equipped to handle maintenance notifications while an ASM might be the better choice to handle warning notifications since the customer may have more technical questions. The cleared alerts notification is for when a white alert on your alert tracker turns green. This signifies that whatever alert was triggered has been resolved in the vehicle. This does not mean that the alert has been changed from open to closed, only that the alert has been resolved. Employees that may want these notifications would be managers who would want to double check how the alert was resolved. My final bit of information to share is where you can find the Service Connect training and reference documents. We've added several documents to help you and your team members with any additional Service Connect questions you may have. The documents can be easily found in the Service Lane portal under the Knowledge tab. As always, thanks for watching.